somebody, uh, I hope I'm saying your name right, it's not a name I've come across before, apologies if I'm not. Um, this is Sandra from Creating Spain and I'm just going to give you a, I don't know, a 101 guide to Shortcuts Lot just to get you started, just to get you up and running in case you have absolutely no idea what to do with this. So this is the startup screen and this is what you will see first of all. I move that very slightly over. Um, shortcut slot. If you go to the bit that says shortcut slot on the top, uh, you have some preferences. And most of these you probably won't want to alter, but there are a few that you might. The first one that comes up is saving to DPI. When you save to an SVG or export to an SVG, you get a choice of um, DPI and as you can see mine at the moment is set to Adobe Illustrator that's not what I normally have it set to I normally have it set to 90 and Inkscape because that's the only other uh, DPI that I'm likely to be using and if you do use Inkscape it means that it comes at the right size when you actually export things or import things or whatever uh, remember the last mat size, that one's quite handy. I generally keep mine on A4 because I tend to put my mat size in the same size as my paper size. It doesn't mean my physical mat is that size, it isn't. Um, it can be anything <laughs> depending on what I'm using. But I always put the mat size to my paper size. Because if you're doing anything like what you see is what you get, it's far easier not to make mistakes doing that. Um, the auto zoom is on. The keep map visible while cutting is on. Automatically switch property tabs based on the current selection. Yeah, fine. Warn me about too many fonts installed. No, <laughs> don't bother. Right, edit. I haven't altered the top ones here, but they're handy to note. The arrow key increment, if you are using your arrow keys on your keyboard, this is how much it will move something by. The nudge one is the ones which are in the movement bar here, position and size. And it's these just here that move from side to side or up and down. And they move in much smaller amounts and they're really handy for very accurate placement. And please excuse my rather big noisy cat in the background. He's probably annoyed that I haven't gone straight downstairs to give him breakfast. It's too early, he's not getting it yet. Okay, so the next one, keep proportions as default. So that means if you have an object selected and you increase the size, by default, it's going to keep the proportions. Uh, do not keep proportions on the free transform. That's the one where you literally drag the um, uh, the corner, I believe. It's one or one or the other of them, and to be honest, I'm <laughs> not quite sure which. But anyway, I don't worry about it. The default shadow size that you can set to whatever you want to set it to. Uh, automatically simplify shapes. That's quite a good one to have on to keep your nodes down to a relative minimum. Okay. And yeah, I think that is it. They used, I'm sure there used to be another one. Ah, this one here. Keep objects on the mat when dragging. This one got me so confused when I first started using Scal. Um, because I was trying to take things off the mat and nothing was happening. They were bouncing back again. I was thinking, what on earth am I doing? And I had that one checked. Because I often work in this creamy background area and then move it onto my mat. So that's the basics on the preferences, okay? Most of the drawing tools 
if you've ever used any drawing software, and I guess as an illustrator you probably have used a fair amount of it, are going to be pretty obvious with the exception of a couple. Uh, that's your selection tool. This one allows you to uh, lasso a selection basically. Uh, you have your node editing, you have your text tool. This one allows you to draw straight lines from A to B or whatever. Uh, a quick thing on this one, because I don't know if all, te oh, blah, blah. all of these tools are the same. You have to click on a space, move it, click again, and to stop drawing with this, press the escape key and then it will close itself off there. Then we have a pencil tool, we have a brush tool, the eraser tool. The eraser tool has two shapes. You can have a square one or you can have a circle and you can change the size. And you can also choose to keep closed paths, i.e. solid objects, um, depending on what you're rubbing out. These are the shape tools, and if you click on the little arrow, you get the ones which are available. The spiral is a new one. Um, that one wasn't in the older versions. It's only been recently added. A dropper tool so that you can copy, fill, and stroke to another object if you so wish. This one is a, a gradient tool, so you can move the angle of the gradient that you've put in. A knife tool, um, cut or crop, depending on which one you use. This one will just distort shapes. Um, this one here is a stencil bridge. If you have objects, hang on a sec, let me just put some objects in here. Da -da and you wanted to make stencils, you can put a stencil bridge in and yeah, basically it helps you to make stencils. It makes a normal font into a stencil if you use it properly. Okay, and then you've got the zoom, you have a ruler and when you're zoomed in you have a little hand that helps you move around the screen. So all that is pretty much standard with the exception of the stencil tool, which you probably don't get in too many other um, software packages. Um, right, the top, new, open, save, cut, copy, paste, undo, redo, pretty obvious. If you're importing an SVG, you use this button. If you have a image that you want to trace uh, automatically, then you use this button. And this opens up the library, which gives you either fonts or shapes or allows you access to your very own projects that you have made yourself and you have kept in file. This allows you to go to the store, never used it. Uh, this is a preview. Now this button is very important. This previews your current page and it will basically show you what you're going to cut and how it's going to cut. If I switch everything else off on here, I get show the cut lines and these are the cut lines as they are going to be cut. If I click on this one, I will get the draw lines as well. I don't have any draw lines. This is for when you're using the pen tool and this option is one that allows you to show the pen colours for your draw lines. If you draw your lines in different colours and you click this, it will show you the different colours. If you don't, it will just show it as if it's all one. This will show you what is going to be printable. And if you click this one, it shows you your registration marks if you're doing a print and cut. Forget about that at the moment. Leave that until you've mastered the cutting. Show your print margins. This is the area in which you can print according, sorry, in which you can print, oh, ticky nose, um, for the page that you have selected. So in my case, this is my Canon printer and this 
is my print margin for that particular printer. And if you click on this one, you can show the nodes for your shapes. Not sure why you'd want to do that particularly on a preview, but it, it can be done if you want it. And then you can click done. Now, if I click on the cutter button, you can see over here we get a preview. And this previews what you are going to actually cut and where it is going to cut according to the mat that you have selected. So according to this window, <clears throat> this is going to be my cut area. And what I would do when I set my machine up, I would put the origin point down here, bottom right hand side. I use my paper to set my origin, not my mat, my paper. The reason being, if I put in, for example, a 12 by 12 mat and I put my origin in the corner of the mat and then put my paper in the middle of the mat, I'm going to be cutting on my mat and not my paper, which is why I suggest that you keep both to the same size. It avoids the confusion. Um, I've got this set up so that it knows I have a silver bullet and to do that you go to the cutter window which is up above. You can't see it on this video because I've got it just to um, just to show this particular window, not my full screen. But up above here, just up here, is a button that says cutter and that allows you to set the cutter that you are using. Regards the settings, I leave well alone. The cut mode, mine is set at the moment on origin point, but you have a choice. You have what you see is what you get, which basically is useful, particularly if you're thinking of doing embossing and cutting. Because if I were to take these objects separately and cut them from an origin point, if I don't cut them as one group and cut them from an origin point, they will all cut from the point that I actually set. So if I set this bottom area here as my origin, this is actually physically going to be cutting down here somewhere. Okay, and it's not going to be cutting up here. If I want it to cut up there and I'm cutting separately, I need to use what you see is what you get. Because, and the reason for this, if I take all these out of here a second, I'll have to cancel this. If I take all the, ah, drawing still. If I take, come on, I clicked you, select, right. If I take all these away. Now, if we pretend that this is my origin point, if I draw an object, no matter what object it is, it will take this point here as the starting area, basically, for my cutting. It will take the bottom right-hand corner of the selection box and it will cut the design as it appears within that box. So if I put my origin here, this, no matter where I've got it shown on here, if I have origin point selected, it is going to cut it down there, okay? So if I go to cutter now, and I have origin point selected, that's where it's going to be. Now, if I move this up here and I go to cutter, and I choose what you see is what you get, you can see that on my preview, it has moved it to where it's actually going to cut. My origin point is still down there. I still have to set that when I put the mat and the paper in the machine, but it will cut it there. What you see is what you get. This button here is for cut the selection only. If you have multiple items on your mat, you can select just one item or more than one item and tick that and it will cut just that item. Use software speed and pressure. I keep this unticked. I adjust the speed on my machine. Choice is yours, but that's the way I do it. And here you have mirror horizontal, mirror vertical. Again, I don't use those. I mirror things when I design on my mat. Mainly used for cutting out writing that you are going to, I don't know, if you're going to cut out some stamps out of craft foam and you want to do that, you might want to mirror them. 
Presets, custom presets, don't bother. <laughs> I just I just don't use them. But you can set them up for various things, okay? You can add your own presets as well. So if you have a particular brand of card that you know cuts at a pressure of 90 and a speed of 450 and it cuts perfectly every time, you might want to add it to your presets. Entirely your choice. Holder, standard blade. Now, one thing to remember, if you have set your holder to a blade and then you do a drawing and you don't alter this to a pen, nothing's going to happen. It won't do it, okay? It has to match whatever it is that you are doing on your mat. So you have a pen, you have a zero offset cut, you have a standard blade setting, um, all sorts of things. Okay, now the blade pen, <laughs> blade pen prompt. It's not that easy to say that. Again, this one is one that allows you to choose to cut the cut lines or cut the cut and draw lines and yeah it's again your choice blade offset the standard one for the blades that we buy from graph tech are 0.25 millimeter for all of them i think except the detail blade i think the detail blade might have a different offset but i couldn't swear to that i don't have the detail blade and the multi-cut at the moment mine is off don't adjust the overcut unless you specifically need to. That's just left at one. Um, the multi-cut, mine is off at the moment, but you can choose to have something cut up to five times. And when you select a multi-cut in here, what it does is each individual item, as it cuts it, it cuts it once or twice or three or four or five times, whatever you do, and then moves on to the next little bit. And it does that for all the intricate bits of a design. Now, sometimes that can be really a very good thing to do. And sometimes you really don't need it to do that. But that's what it does. And again, the speed and the pressure. I don't use this one. I set mine on my machine. The print and cut is a button that you use when you do a print and cut. And only when you do a print and cut. And this is the one that sends the details to the cutter. When you're happy with everything, that's what you press. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the basics. The one thing that I will show you apart from that is the um, the basic cut um, settings and things. Uh, custom mat size we've dealt with. Well, we haven't dealt with the custom mat size, but that's on your, your mat setting. That just happens to appear above there. Now the style, you have various things that you can apply. Just leave it on normal till you know what you're doing. The weld is handy if you have more than one object and they're overlapping. If I were to draw this, for example. And say for this cut and this cut only, I wanted them just to cut the outside line and ignore this overlapping bit, I would press weld. If I wanted that to be permanent, I would go to the path and I would choose the union. But the weld is a temporary thing, okay? It can be undone. The union does not get undone. The cut line type, I have cut, draw with a pen, print and cut, cut, or print and cut, print. Keep it on the cut for the time being or the draw with the pen if you're using the pen. And that is pretty much it for the starting off point. I hope that makes things a little clearer for you. And uh, if you've got questions, ask on the forum because we'll always answer. Day or night, we've got people in Australia. <laughs> we've got people who are probably stateside and things as well, I expect. And we've got people dotted over Europe. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.